the Anytone AT5888 UV3. Do you know it's been seven years, almost to the day? I'm recording this video on September 13th of 2022. And I, fir I did the first video ever for this radio on September 12th of 2016. So we're going to take a look at what I consider to be the best mobile tri-band radio for amateur radio operators today. That includes 2 meter, 220s, and 440 coming up. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews news and how-tos of things that are new in ham radio. Guess what? Since this radio was released in 2016, there's not really been anything else to replace it. Now, a very close runner-up and a radio with a lot many more features is, of course, the Anytone 578, D578 UV3+, Plus, the DMR that is sold by multiple outlets, including um, RNL, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute, but uh, sold by Bridgecom Systems and several other places as well. So this is a tri-band DMR radio that includes 220 as its third band, but it only does 5 watts on 220. This radio, the AT5888 UV3, will do up to 25 watts on 220. So it's more of a true tri-band radio, not just dual band with, oh yeah, 220 is thrown in also, but it's low power, so we don't really care about it type thing. Okay, it's more of a true tri-band radio with a decent amount of power on each band. So over here at rnl.com, and the reason I'm choosing today, this is just kind of like by chance that I'm choosing to record this today because I noticed a couple of weeks ago, I noticed that they had these back in stock. This is, of course, the uh, face of the radio. It look, they have a dual band model that they've had for a long, long time. I think it's a 5888 UV2 Plus, and you can buy those on Amazon, I think for under $200. It's a decent radio. I've never actually tried that one myself, but this UV2 5888 UV3 plus, the two on the two being for dual band and the three on this one be, being for tri band, is back in stock at rnl.com. And like I said, I saw it, I was like, oh, cool. So I went and looked up my video earlier today that I first recorded, and it just happens to be almost exactly seven years ago to the day. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I, I had this in my truck for a number of years after it came out. And then I took it out and I did some rearranging and I put another 220 mobile in. The great thing about this radio is that it is basically, it is basically the only in-production mobile 220 radio, even though it's tri-band, it's the only in-production mobile 220 radio that exists right now with a remo removable face. The face on this radio comes off. You can slide it right off of there, kind of tight on there, but that's okay. I guess that, I guess that's good that it's tight on there. And there's the removable face. So if you want 220 in your vehicle, which I highly suggest going and getting, especially if you're in the North Texas area, Tulsa, Oklahoma has a really good 220 network. I know there's a lot of places around the country. I don't know all of them, but there's a lot of places around the country that have a really good 220 network. And if you have a good 220 network in your area, go get this radio. End of story. Okay, because it's, it's fantastic. So it's got right here, we just read through the kind of the description of it here. 758 memory channels, full duplex operation with independent volume and squelch controls. Full duplex operation. So you can, so those of you who are into satellites, it'll work for that. 50 watts of power on the VHF-1 band, which they're talking about, 2 meters. 25 watts of power on VHF-2 for 220 and 40 watts on UHF with crossband repeat. Four independent receiving bands, a UU, UV, VU, or VV. In other words, it'll go to VHF and UHF on both both sides of the radio. Now, one thing that we noticed when it came out is that it would only do 220 on the left-hand side of the radio. As far as I know, that's still true unless they've updated some firmware somewhere that I don't know about. That's not that unusual, really, because if you recall back to your Yezu FT8900 days, the quad band, and the TYT TH9800 quad band and the uh, Oshang uh, UV950 and 980 radios that have quad band in them. The quad band that includes 6 meters and 10 meters FM, those radios were generally only available on one side of the radio as well. So it's not unusual to have 2 meters and 440 on both sides, but your specialty band's only on one side of the radio. That's kind of a common thing that a lot of manufacturers do. Don't know why, that's just how it is. Display is on a large LCD to adjust brightness, convenient for nighttime use, so you can adjust that, and blah, 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 blah. It's got all this other stuff right here. He's got the Comet 3X, CX333 tri-band base antenna. Fantastic base station antenna if you're looking to get into um, 220. If you, want a, if you want one antenna to do tri-band, that CX333 is great. The antenna that I have for tri-band is actually the Ed Fong tri-band antenna. So he makes a tri-band version that's... Uh, 
like six feet, five and a half, six feet tall. So they're a little bit harder to ship. But uh, I can check with him and see if he's still making those. He did, and I bought several from him at the time, and I've been really happy with it. So PCB Way is holding its fifth PCB design contest. The timeline for this contest begins September of 2022 and goes through the end of the year. Project review time will begin on January 1st of 2023, and the winners will be announced by February 6th. They have a fantastic prize package for first, second, and third place prizes. Check out the website and the link in the description below for the rules and more details. Thank you, PCB Way, for supporting this channel. All right, coming back a couple of days later because I could not find, I'm sure I've got it somewhere, but I could not find my microphone. So I ordered this microphone on Amazon, of all places, and it looks just like, it doesn't, it's not marked any tone anywhere on it. It says dual band FM transceiver, but it looks just like the original microphone. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. If you ever lose a microphone, there you go. So we're going to go through here and I'm going to do, and I've already tested this and I know what the results are. So these are really promising results right here. This radio has been sitting in my storage building, the storage building that I just cleaned out. I know some of you were following me on those vlogs I put up. This radio has been in there for probably four years, three years, four years, somewhere in there. It had dust all over it. I had to clean it up real good before I put it on video. But here it is right here. Here's 146.52. We're transmitting into a dummy load. Just under 62 watts. KC5 HWB testing. In fact, you know what? You might be able to hear that because I've got my outside antenna and my FT847 on 6.52 right now. But nobody can hear me because, as I said, I'm going into a dummy load. Although it is pumping out 61 watts. Can't complain with that. There we go. Okay, now... To change bands, you just hold this knob down here. It'll go to 220, 350, which in the USA is useless, but it'll, it won't transmit there anyway. It just monitors. I think it goes from 350 to 400, I think. And then it goes to the actual 440 band, and then it goes back to 2 meters. So you've got, it's actually kind of like a quad band, but it doesn't transmit on the 350 band. Not that we really care about that anyway. So 223.500 is the national calling frequency for 220 FM simplex. I challenge you to get out your 220 radios and try to get on 220 simplex. So here we go. 38 watts. Now this, this radio is supposed to be do 25 watts. 50 watts on v VHF, 25 on UH, on, I'm sorry, 25 on 220, and I think 40, 45, something like that on 440. It's doing more than that on all bands. KC5HWB testing. This is a dummy load. So let's go up here to 440. 441.0. 47 watts. There we go. Very happy with those results. Especially from a radio that's been sitting around for four years. I haven't been using this radio, but I have been... But I've had the radio. This was one of the first runs of radios when this Anytone first dropped from the USA. So... I wanted to do this video fairly quickly after Roger from RNL got these back in stock. And again, you can check that link in the description below. If you're into 220, if you're into, if you think you might want to get into 220, if you've never done it, check and see if there's repeaters in your area. If you want to do some simplex work, man, you and a couple of friends could have the band to yourself if you wanted to do simplex. And if by some stretch of the imagination, you go to 223.500, and start talking simplex, and there's a lot of people there, or maybe a couple of people there, besides you and your buddies you bought radios to talk with, go down to 222.500, or 223.0, or 223.900, something like that. Okay, so the likelihood of finding someone on 223.500 is not great anyway. I've done some testing around town, and it's fun to talk on 220 simplex. You'll be surprised how far it gets. Let me know what you think about this radio. Again, like I said in the beginning, this is the only radio, and it's not monoband, but it's the only 220 mobile radio I know of with a removable face. So it fits perfectly in my own application, the only need that I have for my vehicle. You're going to see that in the mobile install upcoming 73.